Okay, so we're going to go over how to go about creating sheet notes in Revit under the new DIS standard. So in order to create a sheet note um, and to schedule it, there's really three steps. The first thing is to create the symbol. The second thing is to add a number and a description to that label to that symbol. And then the third thing is to make sure it's scheduling properly and get it on the sheets. So the step, first step is to make a symbol. So we're going to do that from the annotate tab. And you see over here symbol. I'm going to click this. Sorry about that. And it's it's already loaded this in, but really if um, if you got to go over here, you can take a look here. It's in D exclamation mark DIS underscore symbol underscore keynote. So that's what we want. So let's throw that in there and escape out. And here's the symbol. And if we want, we can add a leader right here under the modify tab. We can pull this in and point to something. And so you'll notice right off the bat that this looks a little different, right? So um, it's a much bigger number than you're normally going to see, and we'll get into that in a second. And the second thing is it has this description here. And so the, we can, there's parameters that can control the visibility of this, and uh, we'll go over that in a second as well. But really what's going on here, um, to kind of give you guys the rundown on the new DIS standard, is that we're going to have the numbers be number series. So if you take a look here at the different schedules that we have for sheet notes, you can see here the site plan is starting at zero. So like the first uh, site sheet note would be one through 49. And then life safety is up next. That's 50 through 40, 74, sorry. And then slab edges and then demolition plans are 101 through 199, architectural 201 through 299 and so on. So the idea there is that these are all, uh, you know, a series of sheet notes rather than, um, you know, what we're doing now, which is that, you know, the architectural series, the sheet notes start at one and go through whatever. And then the, uh, the demos might have a sheet note of number one as well. Uh, it just makes things a little bit more clear. And it's more easy. It's easier to uh, schedule them, uh, as you'll see. So, as far as the anatomy of this little symbol here, uh, what we have here, if we click on it, we can kind of see the different parameters that are built into this. So, the first one is this note number, which is this number here, uh, and that's keynote number. And then there's keynote description, which is this piece of text right here, and then keynote type. Uh, this one is important because if we hit this pull down, it will tell it which of these schedules uh, it's going to appear in. Um, there's this schedule here that we'll go into a little bit later. That's the sheet notes all. But right now this is sorting into 200 architectural. If we wanted to move this to ceiling notes, we could and the note would bump down into ceiling notes. And then the last piece of uh, the last parameter of this symbol is this text visible and this is just an on off parameter that's going to turn this off so if we can we just turn that off there you go so when you go to present this you know you're really going to want to have that off but in order to save you the time of going back and forth between a schedule and the thing you're noting up you can just turn this on change this to whatever you want and then turn it back off and let's say I had a bunch of different versions of this all right, let's say we had like 202 and then 203 oops, sorry and 204 and we want to change the text blah 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 blah, blah. All right so there's 202 203 and 204 and so if we want to just grab all of these and then uncheck it we can do that Alternatively, if let's say you have a bunch of stuff kind of floating around, you know, you, this is just sort of an example, but if we grab this and then right click and do select all instances visible in view, we can then turn off everything we want to. So that's a handy way to just really quickly uh, put the text in that you want for that note and uh, be able to see it kind of in your drawing view uh, rather than in the schedule only. So that's the first piece of it, uh, is, is just creating the symbols themselves and then writing out what you want in the symbol. This, the second piece of it is actually figuring out how to schedule everything. So we have these different sheet notes 
And what's going on behind the scenes here, if we click into this site sheet notes, is that you'll see here, if I, if I go to edit this, this uh, schedule, and real quick, just take a half step back, these are actually note blocks, and they're a little different than schedules. Now they're built from the same place. If we go to view, hit the pull down here and hit note block, this note block is going to um, be able to pull in things from tags, in this case a sheet symbol, uh, and then it's able to schedule the parameters of those things. The nice thing about note blocks is you can put them on as many sheets as you want. So unlike a normal schedule that can only go on one sheet, these note blocks can go on all your architectural plans, all your demo plans, all your slab plans. And really all you're gonna do is just click it and drag it on. So if we go over here in the project browser to the first floor architectural plan sheet, you can see I already have this architectural sheet notes and you can see it's auto populating the number and the description. And so if I go into architectural sheet, you can see here, I can change, if I kind of just, uh, and just close these windows here, open up the first floor again, and then tile these windows so we can kind of see them next to each other. If I change this here, test note, it'll change it here, right? And vice versa, test, it changes here. So one thing to keep in mind that is a little idiosyncrasy of this is these are this schedule is not itemizing every instance of the note, right? So if we have multiple 202s, we want to point to this wall over here. We don't want to see 202 10 times in here. Now, the problem that that introduces is that if this 202 has one description and this 202 has another description, the schedule will display nothing. So let's say this one just says test-2. Let's say I kind of I forgot to give it a new number. See here, it just disappears. So we can resolve that a couple of ways. The first one is just to delete the sort of rogue uh, number and it'll come back and it'll display that one. If I undo that, the other option is to just change the number of it, 205, and now it gives it a new line and they schedule out properly. Let's say you have a bunch of 202s, right? Here's all these 202s, and here's a 202 that's kind of messed up, right? So we want to figure out, okay, I have all these 202s, they're all over the place, and I need to find the one that's messing this up. So what I can do is I can grab it here, the one that I can't see, and I hit this button that says highlight and model, and then it'll show me all the different ones that are highlighted. And so then, because of this visible uh, visibility parameter, I can then sort of figure out, okay, here's the one that's the problem, and I can change it to a new number or delete it or whatever I have to do to actually make this show up properly. So when you see this text disappear, it's not, unwriting it. That information is still included in the tag, it's just not showing it. So just be careful with that. If you do copy things, the best thing you can do is just, you know, if you're going to make a new number, let's say we want this to be 202 and this one to be 203, keep an eye out on your schedule, right? Because we don't want to just overwrite 203 because you'll see here if I just switch this to 203, it will break that again. But if I change it to 206, there we go. That looks pretty good. Right. The other thing to keep in mind is that once you delete the last version of a, uh, of a symbol, its line in the, sheet, in, the, uh, in the sheet notes will also disappear. So you can see here we've got here's 202, 202, 202, and 202. If I delete this one, test will come back, great. If I delete this one, nothing happens. If I delete this one, nothing happens. Now this is the last one in the list, so if I delete this, 202 is now gone, as is all the information that was associated with it. So just keep that in mind. If you're kind of going through and just deleting a bunch of text notes, you may end up inadvertently deleting some of your sheet notes as well while you were at it. So that's the sort of how to go about putting all these in here. Um, some more info on uh, these different sheet note types, these different schedules and then this handy little all schedule. So if we open this up, you can see here we have all these different sheets, these all these different schedules, uh, and they're all kind of shown together, right? So these are all, all the sheet notes are really one type of thing, and then they're just scheduled out 
uh, by filtering the schedule. So if we go in here and we edit this and take a look at, at sorting and grouping, right? So in the all sheet schedule, um, they're sorted and then they got a little header on them. If we go close out of here and we take a look at the architectural one, instead of sorting them, we're filtering them. So in the architectural sheet note uh, schedule, I only want to see the architectural notes. So that means that, let's say, we go back here, we create a symbol, we throw it in here, there it goes. If we take this and we switch it from 200 to 300, it's moved it out of architectural and it's gonna move it into ceiling plans. Now the only thing we have to keep in mind is we wanna just call this 301 now. Give that a second. And so now it will show correctly. So you'll notice here there's these, these numbers, right? So 300 is reflected ceiling plan sheet notes. Right? Well, we don't want to see 300. We just want to start at 301 and go up to 350 or whatever we have to go up to. So just for your reference, where these original 300 numbers are, so if we look at like sort of all, right? So 0, 50, 75, 100. My suggestion would be don't use 200, right? Like don't make sheet number two or sheet note 200. Make sheet number 201. But then once you've made a couple of them, you can go in here and if you take a look at drafting views in general category, there's these sheet note types. Now, I had to make these as a, as a drafting view instead of a legend because it won't schedule things in legends, but it will in drafting views. So you can see here we have all of these sheet notes. So for instance, let's say I've got this 300 RCP and I don't wanna see this kind of placeholder number 300. I can just delete that. And then if I open up the 300 ceiling plans, there we go, that looks great. That's exactly what I want. And then if I wanna take this and put this on the A300, first floor reflected ceiling plan, I'm gonna grab this ceiling plan and dump it on right there. And it looks pretty good. The last thing to note about um, you know how these schedules sort of just appear on the sheet is that they are if I have to kind of go back over to the actual sheet itself you'll note here it has this view template on right so if I tried to go in here and edit the appearance of this it won't let me edit it that's because it has a view template that's overwriting it so in general we're starting to introduce more and more view templates to kind of control the visibility of things and just standardize the way we work so if we go in here and then we edit the appearance, now we can get in here and change things like the, the weight of the grid lines, the outline, how big the text for is for the title, the header, and the body. But we would prefer to standardize these things and kind of have them somewhat locked away inside this view template. If you need to change it, you can. You just go into the, into the view, and then instead of trying to edit it here, you're gonna edit it here. Uh, just keep in mind that this view template schedule underscore sheet notes is applied to all of our sheet note schedules. So if you change this view template, you'll change all these different uh, schedules. So that's pretty much it for schedules, uh, specifically sheet notes. Um, yeah, thanks.